From Orlando, Florida, it's FPV Late Night. Tonight, our special guest is Little Stellar Fox and your host, Cappuccino. Thank you, thank you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Late Night FPV. I'm your host, Cappuccino, and on this episode, we're gonna have our first female guest. It is Jamie from North Carolina, and she goes by Little Stellar Fox. But before we bring her out, we're gonna have another comedic set by our friend, Ladrib. I'm just here for the. I not, don't get to be. No, a you're guest. not. You're not a guest yet. Well, you said the. You said the first female guest member, and I thought maybe it was gonna. Because be the one. eyeliner. Just get it. The That's eyeliner. funny. Yeah, everyone always asks about the eyeliner. You know, football players they wear the eyeliner, and they're tough, right? We can. That's. I'm just trying to look tough. It's fun. So, so. Drew, thank you for for doing another attempt. Yeah. You know. Um, How would I do? It, well, so when a comedian does well, they get asked to sit on. And, and, you know, maybe someday you'll get that request. But tonight is, was a good attempt. So thank you. Let's hear it for Drew. All right. So uh, now that that's over with, um, we're going we're gonna to ask Jamie to come on out. And uh, let's give her a round of applause. Hi, Jamie. It's nice seeing you. So I think the last time I got to see you was at the uh, Rotor Right Rampage. Yes. Yeah, you know, maybe should we talk about your prior hobby? Is that, is that can I call it a hobby before yeah, getting into I FPV? Yeah, I mean, it's not really prior. It's still current. I still do it. Like Wait, other. what is it? Hula hooping. Hula hooping. Yeah. Professional hula hooping. Well, not professional. I mean, I did. Hobby hula hooping. Yeah, ho hobby. That's, that's really great. So did that somehow get you into FPV? Is there any kind of correlation there? Or? Um, not starting. I do definitely see correlation between the way that I, my flying style and my hooping, like I can see similarities through both of them, but no, it's, they didn't like come to be together in any way in the beginning. You know, something that I've noticed is you have really progressed a lot over probably even the last six months. What would you attribute that to? I guess about a year ago, because that's when I, I really started flying pretty hard. Uh, I met a couple of really rad people. I happened to be going up north, and I remember talking to uh, this guy. His name's Spot Grinder. You guys might know him. I've, I've heard um, of him. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember talking to him quite a bit, and he he really put a little bug in my ear, and then this other guy got a hold of me because he was like, you guys are not far. He was over in Baltimore. You guys might have heard of him. His name is Cricket. Him and I had a really big conversation, and uh, that was really the thing. Like talking with the both of them and both of them being super supportive and telling me that I should push and do this harder really was one of those things. Flying with them in particular, we went uh, to the graveyard and all that kind of stuff and just their words. Wait, you flew in a graveyard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people didn't like that very much. I'm uh, sure they were vocal about it. They, I got quite a few very nasty comments and a lot of really, really terrible messages um, from people. Really? It, yes. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were not very excited. Can you repeat any of these messages? Basically just how disrespectful and terrible of a human being I am for, you know, flying. Are you a disrespectful human being? No. Um, in my I mean, opinion, I've no. not <laughs> seen you be disrespectful. No. But no, I don't view flying in the graveyard as disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't hit anything. We weren't on any grays. We weren't doing anything but enjoying the scenery and enjoying this beautiful open landscape with, you know, tombstones are gorgeous. But what about visitors and... Things well, like had that. there been people there, we wouldn't have flown. Mm -hmm. But Bot's cemetery is pretty old and dilapidated. Like, oh, that's the cemetery? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard like the newest headstone there is like yeah, so, early 1900s. Like, the chance of somebody being in there was so incredibly low anyway. He flies there all the time. So it was one of those things that had there been mourners or anything like that, anything at all, we wouldn't have flown. Because that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's your family, do you? But, um, it was empty, and it was just this big, empty, open area in the middle of Philadelphia, so why not take advantage of that? Oh, wow. When, when you got into FPV, so was it more the cinematography or the movement? I got to imagine if you hula hoop, the there's movement. probably a dance background. Yeah. Or, you know, so, so is, it, is it like, because it, I've, I've It actually, really is dancing, dancing with trees. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, um, 
I tried racing when I first started, mm -hmm. and I did that for a while. I helped establish and get my local multi GP group up and running. We did that, and then it was just one of those things. I couldn't commit to being there all the time, but I hated how restrictive it was. Okay. I hated having to go on the same lines as everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's just about who can do it the fastest. Mm -hmm. For me, I can run around racetrack, but I can't dance around treetops. Right. So that was the real draw for me to just like want to get more into the mini quads and do all that kind of stuff and just learn how to fly for real because I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted to be able to see the tops of those trees and I wanted to be able to go places that I can't. Okay. You know? So the culture of the two, racing and freestyle, are very different. Oh, very. <laughs> so so uh, tell me what your experience of that. So with racing, while it's incredibly supportive and everybody loves everybody, they are incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. I can compete, but I don't care about winning. That's mm -hmm. not a big goal of mine. So watching those guys get angry and upset, and the big thing is watching them break thousands of dollars in a day and seeing the frustration and how upset it made them like that takes all the fun away for mm -hmm. me because now this is a stressful thing mm -hmm. it's not a relaxing thing because you're worried about if your gear is going to perform well enough to the guy next to you but this is your best friend who you all of a sudden hate because he's doing better than you right, right. and I didn't like that so with freestyle everybody is just everybody's best friend mm -hmm. Everybody wants everybody to fly. It's like, if your camera goes out, everybody's like, oh, you want to use my camera? Uh, Tack busted up his GoPro while we were at a spot this morning. And Drew, no hesitation at all. Here's a $700 camera. Do you want to go and break this? Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was so really nice. So it's one of those things like, I have seen very small instances of that happening in race settings. But the competitiveness and how angry everybody gets at each other, no. I'd rather just go and chill and have fun and burn some packs. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. I, th I think that, you know, the race atmosphere is for, you know, a certain group. I, I wonder how much of it is, though, um, and, and don't take this the wrong way, I mean, I prefer pre freestyle myself, but I think freestylers are more artists and racers are more uh, analytical. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, one can't be the other, but, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you see that? that oh, for sure. You see that uh, line as well? Yeah, the guys who race, they're very precise. And to find a racer who flies freestyle well, mm -hmm. and it look really pretty and, you know, fluid and smooth, isn't incredibly often unless it's one of those top tier pilots. Do you think Vanover is a good freestyler? Vanover is amazing in both racing and freestyle. He's probably one of my absolute favorite pilots, like overall. Oh, really? Just because, oh, yeah. Because not only is he a, an amazing pilot when it comes to racing on a track, mm -hmm. the lines he puts together in his freestyle are unreal. Hmm. Like the way that he puts stuff together, you just sit there and you're like, huh? And you can see the racer mindset in his movements. Right. Like you can tell that you know because the way he moves the quad around, uh -huh. but just his awareness from racing. How he transfers it over is beautiful. Do you think he's better than Ladrib? Better is not a good term. They're very, di <laughs> they're very different. Yeah. They're very different. Uh, Drib is very smooth, very fluid, very like watching him fly is like listening to your favorite song. And then with Captain That's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and then with Captain Vanover, it's sort of like listening to something you've never heard before, but you're, you're just like, man, I love this. Oh, wow. That's yeah. really, you really descriptive. I love that. That's good. Um, I need to get a clip ready for you. We didn't get oh, a clip yeah. ready. Yeah, that's the uh, no escape uh, yeah, spot this, yep, from Skitto. This is actually, um, the, that video is one of the big reasons why I started flying, because I was like, holy. Oh, really? So skits, like, Skitto's? Well, not even started, because that was only about a year ago. But that was one of the thing, one of the reasons why I wanted to, like, it pushed me, because him coming out of the bottom uh -huh. of that freaking building, which, side note, there are gates now, so. Right. <laughs> you can't get out of the bottom anymore. Uh -huh. There's no escape, literally, now. But watching him do that was just one of those things that was like, whoa. So that was an inspiration. Yeah, moment. of course. I mean, because it's, how? Like, right. the physics behind it just don't make sense. But the more you fly, the more you figure it out. And you're like, oh, wow, there it is. So do you think there are more female freestyle pilots than racers? Absolutely not. There's more racer female pilots? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? In my opinion, I have noticed that a lot of the girls that fly do race. And mm -hmm. I feel like finding other girls who actually like freestyle and actually rip freestyle mm -hmm. 
has been pretty difficult. A lot of girls don't like to push it and break things. Uh huh. You know, they they I've noticed I guess when, you hand, when you hand a girl a radio for the first time, whereas a guy is gonna sit there and you have to say, Don't shoot it to the moon because they're gonna give it full and they full throttle. Do. The girls ease on nice and easy. Right. You don't worry about them shooting to the moon. You're just like, Oh, you're gonna crash like eight feet in front of me and it'll be fine. Now something I I, I had a discussion the other day. Uh, with a friend of mine and we were talking about you know my background is marketing and you mm -hmm. know uh, doing commercials and things of that sort and there was always the rule that like speaks to like if you want to sell something to let's say a teenager you know uh, uh, um, a hat. Some makeup or a hat or something something they would wear you'd show the person that would wear that kind of thing and uh, typically, not, not somebody you're trying to force to make it yeah. look like they would wear that. So in this hobby, I think it's, it's very similar where, uh, do you think there's less females because they're not seeing females? So is it the chicken or the egg thing where they're not being seen or as inspired? Yes, um, because even being within the hobby and being connected, it's still hard for me to find female pilots. Mm -hmm. And I'm a female pilot in female pilots groups. You know, I've never flown so maybe with another just... American female on, like here. I've never really? flown with another woman that was American here. But do they just not want to fly? No. Or do you think they're out there? Oh, they're, they're definitely out there. Okay. Like, um, I recently got added to a couple of women's groups and I was scrolling through and I noticed mm -hmm. that it was all DJI stuff because there are a ton of women who fly DJIs. Okay. and do that sort of uh, drone flying. Mm -hmm. So I got added to a couple of these groups and I noticed scrolling through, I was like, oh, there's no mini quad stuff in here. Let me, uh, let me show these women a little something maybe they haven't seen before, maybe they'll hate it, maybe they won't, whatever. Oh, what was so, the reaction there? Oh my goodness. There was like 73 women who mm -hmm. commented or sent me messages, all of them like, you know, there was like one or two that were like, oh, this is too fast, but that's awesome, nice music. And then all of the rest of them were like, what is this? Really? Like DJI women who are already flying drones who have never seen huh. mini quads, never. And that was their first? And they're saying, they're like, how are you doing this? How are you making this happen? And I'm saying they're explaining how acro mode works. Right. And I'm sitting there explaining uh, how they can get into it and how they can start. And I just wanted to see, I was like, I hadn't seen it. And to see that there were so many of these women that had never even been introduced to this that are already part of the hobby. Right. It's a kind of different side of it. And they have no idea what this is. Yeah, I really think that when it comes to having more females involved, mm -hmm. the fact that there aren't females shown is a huge thing. Because I'm a girl who flies in girls' groups and I still have to And you to think more her. girls want to fly? Yes. But they're afraid to? They're unaware that they can. They're I unaware. Would, that it's intimidating. I would think that it being, would be very intimidating. Being a girl in an extremely male-dominated community like this is very intimidating. These guys, you know, they're hard. They're mean. They'll really? Tear, yeah, I mean, not all of them. Most okay, of so them let's are super do, nice. But I, there are I guys that will tear you down. I love lists. Let's do a top five list. Top five things that guys should do to make it more... Uh, mm. approachable what do we want to say more accommodating to women more approachable for women top yes. five things would to make probably FPV be... freestyle more approachable to women well freestyle is already in my opinion way more approachable for women than racing because but you said of the there's lack more of in racing there are but like I said but they're not aware of freestyle a lot well a lot of the women are the show interests are unaware of anything like that right you know right. they've never seen that okay the big things would be be supportive because there aren't many women doing it. So when you see a woman that's actually trying, mm -hmm. be supportive of that. Girls want you to be like, hey, this is good. Because just like guys- With, Without hitting on them. Yeah, without, without <laughs> making, uh, rule number two. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, maybe it should be rule number one. And then rule, rule number one. one, don't make it a weird sexual thing. Mm -hmm. Like don't make it about that. So number three, no dick pics. Oh, wow. Okay, didn't That's see that one, one coming. We're not going to go any further into that, but number three. I, I would think that wouldn't even have to be on the list. No but dick pics. Oh, okay, you, would, you would think. It, the fact she needed to mention it, let's, let's put it on the list. The, okay. girls, the girls all know. Number four, if you see her struggling, offer help. 
like I was saying, basically it's just all support. Just be supportive. But that's a good rule for anybody. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I said, all of these rules apply to both sexes. Yeah, it would, actually, that is that's kind of, <laughs> especially the third one. <laughs> really? None, to, none for you. <laughs> Being encouraging and supportive just overall is the big rule. That right. is what I really want for not just the females, also the males, because there are tons of guys that need that support too. Okay. But the girls, just because there are so few of us, we don't, even within our females groups, the support among the females, like we have good support between us. We do communicate, we do talk, um, but there's still, it's not like how there's so many of you guys. Okay, but we got one more for the list, five. Or should it just be four? It should be four, I like okay. the numbers. Okay, we're gonna keep the list at four. <laughs> all the rules kind of go across the Yeah, it goes across. Listen to each other, we're all, we're all just flying toys. Speaking of toys, I wanna loop back around to, you know, do you get offended if people call your hula hoops toys? No. Really? Did you bring any? I did. So I'm, I'm assuming people are going to want to see what this is. <laughs> so I don't know how this works. Well, like, I have one for you too. No, for me. Yeah. Um, that one's extra well, easy to just, use. Just for me to, to, to look at? No, for you to use. We can move this chair over there. No, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, so what, what's... No, because you have to do it now. It's here. Well, I brought it all the way from I kind of thought you might say that. So I previously chose a hula hoop surrogate and that's Jeff Orta. Uh -huh. So Jeff, would you like to come on up? Sure, I'll try it. So, <laughs> so you didn't see that coming. I didn't. I wanted you to do it. Yeah, that, that no. We might want to move you the chair just to Okay, it. so we're going to have to move this. Going? Yeah, you got it. Woo! So, that was pretty um, good. That one, uh, I like to give that one to people when they're first trying because it's obviously the largest hoop uh, that I have. And the bigger the hoop is, the easier it is for it to stay up. The smaller it is, the faster you have to make it spin. Um, so You're not even moving. No. How long have you been around this? Like yeah. Four years, almost. It'll be is that four, how long you've been doing it? It'll be four years in August. Oh, wow. I thought maybe you were doing it all your life or something. No. Nope. Huh. Uh, it's one of those things that... A friend of mine was doing it. I need a smaller hoop. A friend of mine was doing it, and I was like, oh, that is really cool. Uh, but it's way too girly for me. Because I, I wasn't a dancer. I never did anything crazy like that. I didn't do anything you know, like that when I was growing up. Uh, a lot of music, but nothing physical. So she sat there, and she was like, no, I'm just going to leave this one here. One of these days, you're going to pick it up. <laughs> and uh, one day I sat there, I was bored, and I did pick it up. And instantly I realized that doing some of the things that I thought, like this, look so awesome, are actually incredibly hard until you figure out how to do it. Huh. Like it takes more thought to make stuff like this happen than what you would think. But you're talking to me as you're doing it. Oh, like I said, four years. <laughs> I could do so this. So can you do it? Oh, yes, yes, he can. He, so, can, he, he, can, he can keep it up and he can do. Would you like um, to introduce your husband? <laughs> Come on. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> he's coming. Yeah, Actually, he's, he can do something ready. that I can't do. OK, I want to see that. Who? What can you do that she can't do? The dirty pizza toss from the ground. In flip flops? This is my husband, Nick. Go <laughs> 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 It's really hard to look up and spell because I'm terrible with the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> that was that was great. Pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 So yeah. these are specially balanced? Nope. They are just pieces of plastic. Mm -hmm. They're special kind of plastic. Uh, they're pro. They're pro pro. pro polypropylene. Polypropylene mm -hmm. and HDPE. They make them in two different. Okay. kinds of plastic. Mm -hmm. So each of them respond differently and um, they make them in different sizes like diameters and the size of the hoop makes a difference. Isn't that just like frames? Like quad very, frames? Very much like, like where they all look the same but they all have these They little... look the same if you don't know what you're looking at. Right, right. I just think it's fascinating that any niche has like all these tiny little like yep. details that matter. It's really cool though because um, through FPV I've actually introduced a bunch of FPV girlfriends mm -hmm. and girls that are sort of interested into hooping as well. I sent out, uh, I don't know, like 
30 hoops last year and a bunch really? of props to So how much is girls. a professional hoop? One like I use, it's not taped. Like these ones aren't taped or reflective except for the big practice hoop, which I don't count that one. They're just plain plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, those are like 30 bucks shipped. Really? Depending. Um, and then the ones that are taped, like if they have reflective tape or they have a really cool tape job or something like that, mm -hmm. hoops can just non-electronic ones can get up to like $60, $75, depending on what you have, because oh, reflective wow. tape is super expensive. Yeah. Like I've made hoops and uh -huh. I know like buying the supplies, it's like, oh yeah, this is why this is justified. Plus the skill it takes to wrap a hoop, you're not wrapping a straight pole, you're wrapping a circle. Right. Well, that's uh, a lot. very educational. <laughs> did you guys learn something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did. So um, goals, I want to talk to you about your goals. Goals in what? In FPV. Do you in have FPV? goals in FPV? I guess my biggest goal with FPV would be to spread the love. Until you actually do it, then you realize you're like, oh my goodness, like this is a freedom you can't get in any other form. And it's I've important always, for you to share that with yeah, others? Yeah, I feel like it's, um, you know, there are tons of people that they don't have that escape any other way. They physically can't do it. They mentally can't you know, go and be around people or whatever the case may be. Once you do it the first time and you're up in the air, mm -hmm. the sense of accomplishment, the sense of like instant joy and freedom and just like everything on the ground melts away. Mm -hmm. And I want to share that with everybody because that's a feeling that it's like racing cars or mm -hmm. um, motorcycles without endangering your body. Mm -hmm. Why no, would you not want to share that with everybody? I, I do. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's a very well put. And I, I really like the way that you explain things and give analogies you should you should make videos <laughs> so, every now and then <laughs> yeah so your channel is little stellar fox yep. and you guys tune in make sure you catch uh, her episodes and subscribe so thank you <laughs> thank you for coming on i really appreciate you taking the time so with that we're going to close out this episode of late night fpv hope to have you back again uh, down the road awesome so sure. thank you very much all right thanks guys Oh, <laughs> oh,